Okay, so um, you have two handouts in this uh, workshop. One of them is the slides, so you won't be frantically trying to take notes. <laughs> um, unless you want to frantically take notes, there will undoubtedly be things that you'll want to uh, make notes of for yourself. The other is a worksheet, and that's just one page. So if you're concerned about toner or paper or anything else, <laughs> um, you may want to just print the one page uh, tribe building worksheet. Uh, if you like to have everything in front of you, then you can go ahead and print the slides as well. But we'll go ahead and get started. You said this is a workshop. I thought it was a webinar. What's the difference? <laughs> well, a workshop would be when people actually get involved and do, there's interaction. Uh, I see. Well, there will be a little bit of interaction because there are a couple of places where we'll be taking questions. Um, and actually, you can enter questions at any time. Uh, just by entering them in the questions section um, on the GoToWebinar control panel, right? You can always do that. Exactly. And we may not get to your questions right that second, but we will pretty shortly. So welcome. Uh, this is our free webinar. We do one of these per month. And uh, this month we're talking about uh, powerful marketing by building a tribe. And uh, if you've ever read any of Seth uh, Godin's books. Uh, one of the most famous is uh, his book about tribes. And we kind of took that as our inspiration this month uh, for some of the things that we're talking about, right? That's his book aside on tribes, well, why do you call, why are you using that word tribe? We'll talk about that in just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about tribes and we're also going to talk about the opposite uh, of that as well. Uh, you know, which is what most people do in marketing, and that's just try to schlep their product or service, right? Okay, so this webinar is for you if you sell a product or service in the aviation industry, um, if you sell a B2B or a B2C product, uh, that's business to business or business con to consumer, to a select audience, and if you want to improve your sales, you want to sell more stuff, right? Of course. Of course. Okay. All right. So in our insider circle, this is our group of clients. Um, we do have a book club, and we read one book each month um, that is a popular sales and marketing or business uh, book. And this month's book, of course, is, is Tribes by Seth Godin. But whether or not you've read the book, I promise this is going to be valuable for you because um, a common problem that we have in aviation is that uh, there may not be enough leads, or you may feel like you're not getting enough leads in the door. Uh, you have a small, very specific audience that is even um, in the running to buy your product or service, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So um, that's a problem. And also, customers may buy from a competitor because of a slightly lower price or convenience. So, for example, they'll go for the lowest priced fuel on the field. And it doesn't matter how much you've spent on your FBO, you know, they, uh, people tend to do that if they don't have any loyalty or if they don't have any um, reason to select you over your, your competitors. And the way that you make that advantage is really something that we call tribes, and we'll talk about that. It's perceived convenience, too. It's not necessarily real convenience. Absolutely. So I'm Paula Williams. Yeah, and I'm John Williams. And we are ABCI, and ABCI's mission is to help you folks sell more products and services in the aviation world. Absolutely. So the information that we get is from a lot of different sources, and we do try to attribute all of them. But uh, just in case we miss something, because these are recorded live and we are not perfect, a lot of the ideas we get from the books that we read, you know, of course, our, our book of the month, uh, every month, uh, those ideas tend to stick in our heads. and. And uh, we use what is useful, and we don't use what is not useful, and, and so on. Make sure you have a pen, and also make sure that your cell phone is turned off and all of your other windows are closed. Uh, and the reason for that is that we found that um, multitasking is highly overrated. Uh, when we do webinars and other things, uh, people learn so much more when they are fully engaged. So, you know, we'd really love to have you asking questions. We'd really love to have you thinking about what we're talking about and making notes because the most important thing that you can do for your company is to make more sales, right? Absolutely. And we're going to help you do that for the next hour. So if you can turn off all the distractions, we will uh, make sure that 
that it's worth your time. So how do companies get people to talk about their products all the time? I mean, you hear pilots talking about Garmin, right? Uh, the G1000 is the coolest thing in the world. You know, I mean, they're, they're always talking about their, uh, their Garmin systems. The King Schools, um, John and Martha King are some of the most popular instructors that there are. And you don't really hear people talking about their flight instructors all that much, except for John and Martha, right? Yeah, true. They've got a following that nobody else seems to be able to match. Um, other people, Harley Davidson, this is not a, a, an aviation brand, but they have a lot in common with some of the aviation brands because of some of the things that they do. Uh, this guy got a tattoo of the Harley Davidson brand on his arm. That's crazy. You know, I'd love to have somebody do an ABCI brand on there. <laughs> <laughs> of course you would. Exactly. No, but I mean, people are so loyal to certain brands. Um, another one is uh, Cirrus, Cirrus Owners and Pilots Association. They've got, uh, you know, hundreds of members that send their pictures and, you know, they're, um, you know, they enjoy activities together and they do stuff and they are always talking to each other in this Facebook group. Uh, you know, how do they make people so loyal uh, to their brand? Another one is uh, Bose headsets. We have a Bose 10 headset that we absolutely love. And, of course, we talk about it to everybody. We have we can two of them. Of. We have two Bose headsets, of course. We can't have just one. That would well, not be fair. you need one and exactly. I need one. Exactly. So how do they get that kind of loyalty? And how do they build tribes of devoted customers? Well, it starts with quality. Yeah. Um, customer service. Exactly. So there's a lot of things that are kind of outside of the control of marketing. Um, those being the two. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have a fantastic product and you have to have fantastic customer service. But there's a lot of people that have a fantastic product and fantastic customer service that do not have loyal tribes. Let's talk about your power company. <laughs> okay. Great. Most power companies have a really good record of uptime, right? They they keep the lights on 99.9% .9 of the time or in better. In this country. In this country, that's true. Not so in some others. But how many people would get their ta their their power company logo tattooed on their arm? I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody either. Um, not very many people love their power company, and they may have excellent products and services, they may have excellent customer service, and they may have a really fantastic over-the-top record. They may have their guys out there in snow and sleet and hail fixing the lines and making sure things are working right and, and everything else, but nobody really cares, right? True. The difference is marketing, right? Um, so let's talk about the number of brand interactions that you have with your power company. Um, the times that you interact with your power company are really the only times you think about your power company is when you pay the bill, right? True. And that's kind of a negative, um, or at least it, it doesn't make you feel fabulous when you're paying your power bill. And that happens 12 times a year, you know, whether you write out a check or whether you see the debit in your account or whatever, you see the, the power company name on your credit card bill, right? Uh -huh. Okay. Another time that you interact with that brand is when the power goes out, which is a much more negative reaction. So this doesn't really have severity. It just has uh, numbers of interactions. And that is super negative when the power goes out, right? Yes. So this is a big minus one, right? <laughs> well, they aren't weighted, so. Right. No, they're not weighted. Um, you may have, you know, good, uh, a feel good about your power company when they get the power back on. So that's a positive interaction, and that's you know a plus one. So altogether, we have a minus 12 as far as interactions with the power company. True. Okay. That is why nobody gets the power company logo tattooed on their arm. <laughs> right? I'd say. Okay. Cool. So um, let's talk about active versus passive interaction. Um, if you look at the left side of the line here, Garmin... John and Martha King, Bose, Harley Davidson, Cirrus, all of those folks encourage active interaction, right? When you interact with them, you're actually doing something. You're using their product. You're taking their classes. You're um, listening to, uh, to ATC on your Bose headset. Well, but by default, you use Bose every time you go fly. Right, exactly. I mean, if you have one and you have 
and you do fly, then that's when you use them. Right. So, you know, those interactions are two things. They are both positive and they are active. Right. And when you're talking about uh, the power company, all of those interactions are passive. You really don't have much control over it. You kind of feel like a victim <laughs> in the situation. If the power goes out, there's not a lot you can do about it. Um, and you're not really actively participating with the brand. You're just being um, worked upon by the brand <laughs> or having your day ruined by the brand. Right. And they are also um, negative. It is interesting, though, because you rely on it all day long and into the night, and yet you never say, thank gosh we have power. Right, exactly. Um, and, you know, whether this is fair or not, it's true. And a lot of companies in the aviation industry end up being like the power company. They provide a fantastic product or service, but nobody really notices them until something goes wrong, right? <laughs> right. Okay. Now, the reason for that is because um, these guys on the left-hand side of the screen, every one of these, Garmin, King, Bose, Harley, Cirrus, they work very hard to make sure that you notice every single positive interaction, right? I suppose. Okay, let's talk about how they do that. <laughs> so we're going to talk kind about... <laughs> how to create more positive brand in interactions and make sure that people recognize them as positive brand interactions, right? Mm -hmm. um, we'll talk about active brand interactions rather than passive, you know, where they're just being acted on. Um, we're talking about how to convert your website visitors from passive visitors who just kind of surf by uh, and never do anything on your website to active shoppers. Um, and we're going to talk about how to welcome new customers and make them feel like like family, create those those positive uh, interactions. And we're going to talk about how to re-engage old customers for repurchases and testimonials. So sound like a good idea? No. No? I'd say previous customers, not old customers. Okay, fine. Previous customers. <laughs> okay, so carrying on, if we can get this to work. Okay, so questions before we get started. Looks like we've got a couple coming in. Uh, yeah. Let me redo the screen here. Something happened. I'm not sure what it was. Uh-oh. Okay. All the brands you mentioned, King, Schools, Garmin, etc., are mostly B2C or almost retail. What about B2B brands? Okay. When we were advertising for this webinar, um, and also when we're giving examples, we want to give examples that everybody has heard of. Uh, and so that's why we chose ones that are really big, popular companies, right? But um, if you chose VJS Lincoln, you'd have the same feeling about them as you would about King Schools, but you would only know about them if you were in the market to build a hangar. And I don't know how many people in the audience are building a hangar right now, probably a, a, a smaller number. Mm -hmm. So, you know, most of the business to business examples that we could think of are not really um, examples that the people in the audience could relate to. So it absolutely w will work for B2B or business to business. We just didn't use those examples because we wanted to, um, to use examples that everybody has some experience with, right? Okay. Okay. And, uh, all of those brands are big and have tons of money. <laughs> what about the smaller companies? Okay. Some of the ideas that we talk about today are going to involve some money. Um, I'm not going to lie. Uh, you know, they, it's easier to do if you have money. Um, that's the reality of, of life in the world. No, right? but, but folks need to understand that customers cost money. Exactly. Um, but the other side of this is some of the things that we mention are just going to be very small changes that you can make in the way that you interact with customers or the way that you answer the phone that don't cost you any money at all. True. Cool? Okay. Fair? Any other questions? Uh, not yet. Okay, cool. So carrying on. Let's get started. All right. So how do people interact with your website? Um, a lot of the websites that we see in the aviation industry are just what we would call a brochure um, or a billboard or something like that that doesn't really have any features that people interact with. 
Now, there are some utilities on the web um, called heat maps that you can use to show where do people put their mouse or their eyes, and I'm not sure how they tell where your eyes are on your website, <laughs> but they claim to be able to do this. Um, you know, some of these are, um, you know, if you search heat map on the, the web, a lot of them have uh, free service or different utilities to show, they call it eye tracking or heat mapping uh, your website. And if you Google that, you're going to find a lot of different options to do that for free. And the only way they can just track the eyes is with if you've got a computer with a camera in it and that's activated, then they can do that. That makes sense. So, um, yeah, this is a, a heat map of our website. And you can see where people spend the most time clicking around. And they do say that this is accurate to within um, about 30 or 40 pixels. So, you know, it's kind of the general area, but, you know, not precisely what. Uh, so that's where people look. Is that where people click? Yes and yes. That's where people interact with the website. Um, that's weird because there's nothing there. All right. So what I'm seeing, and, <laughs> you know, you can uh, um, argue that these are not exactly um, precisely where they should be. But, you know, these are our calls to action right here. And so this cluster, assuming that it's th within 30 pixels, will say this is supposed to be over here. Okay. And 30 pixels is a very, very small area. That's true. But uh, here we have our um, button that you can use to schedule an appointment with us. And you have a click to call button down here. And so I'm assuming that these two groups of, of uh, dots, and you know the red dots are more active, the other color dots are less, less active. Um, we also have a pretty big section here that I think have to be going to this link here. Click uh, here to make an yeah, appointment. Yeah, okay, I got it, yeah. Okay, so it's shifted a little bit, but it gives you an idea of what people are doing on your website. So not very many people, I think we can assume, are using our social media buttons. Um, and not a whole lot of people are using our menu other than you know services up here could be using those dots. But what you can do with a map like this is you can see um, where people are spending the most time on your website. And of course, a lot of people are scrolling down, which is good. Um, that's where they would touch the screen if they wanted to scroll down. So that is... That is goodness. But if you get a heat map of your website, um, you can see, are people being active or passive? Right? Interesting. Okay, cool. So neat little tool. You want to have more things that they can interact with, like a clickable phone number like that we had talked about, like having an active, and if you came to this uh, webinar through our um, sign up page, you'll notice, you know, there was a, an interactive clock, you know, that showed Here's what's going on. Here's when the webinar starts. And I know people are joining us from all different time zones. So, you know, we want to have something interactive there. And a big yellow button, save my spot. Um, also a place where you can put comments, you know. Um, so, you know, lots of opportunities for people to interact on every single page. So if you'll notice, when you drive someplace, when you drive yourself, you will remember how to get there. If somebody else drives you, you probably won't remember how to get there. So that's the active versus passive thing again. And if you are actively participating with somebody's website, you're investing energy into their brand and uh, hopefully getting a positive outcome. And every time you do that, that's a positive brand interaction. And you're stacking up those points, right? Yep. Cool. All right. So other kinds of sticky or interactive content, um, social media. Um, you know, people can see additional posts from your um, from your feed if you if they like you, you know, if you, they like your company, they're more likely to see your future content. Um, they can answer questions or ask questions. You know, that's an interactive forum. So it's not just content being pushed out. Um, they can comment on what you have to say. Uh, it's actually an invitation to comment pretty much every time you post on social media. And a lot of people um We'll take advantage of that, which is good, right? Yes. Okay. In trade shows, a lot of times people will spend a lot of money to be at a trade show, and then they'll just stand there, you know, in a booth, which is crazy, right? Um, you really want to make sure that you give people an opportunity to interact. Um, so, you know, you can have product demos where you actually get the product into their hands. Um, you can have a trivia quiz about 
your product or service. And this is great for things like insurance, where it's really hard to put your product in their hands <laughs> and have them interact with it. But if you do a trivia quiz, it gets them involved with your product and makes them do something and be active at your booth. Um, other activities, you know, we've had seen people do, uh, you know, different things, everything from mini golf to a magician to, um, you know, somebody drawing portraits to, to any number of things. Um, ideally, you want this to be tied to your, your product or service, but as long as you get them doing something, they're a lot more likely to remember you uh, after that trade show, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So questions about <clears throat> phase one or advertising, right? Um, how do you get a heat map of your website? Okay, um, the one that I did was from a company called Crazy Egg, crazyegg.com. <laughs> Um, and they have a free option, and I just use that. Uh, there are many others. If you Google heat map or eye tracking uh, website on Google, you'll see a bunch of companies that do that and that can give you a free heat map, or you can pay for different options that'll give you more detailed information. Uh, this is interesting. How do you make phone numbers clickable? Ah, okay. There's a little piece of code that you can use on your website, and I highly, highly recommend that you do this because a lot of people are accessing your website on their phone and they wanna be able to just click to call, right? Yep. So every time you have a phone number on your website, you wanna make it clickable. <clears throat> and I'm not gonna recite the code or you know anything like that, but we'll send it in the notes after this, uh, this session to everybody that, that wants it. And how do you create a schedule link ah click to schedule um schedule an appointment you know that kind of thing good question you'll need a piece of software that interacts with your calendar and there are a few of them we use one called time trade there's also calendly out there um, and several others uh, we don't necessarily advocate any particular one but um basically they interact with your Google Calendar or whatever it is that you use to schedule appointments with, it will figure out when you have free time and it will offer those times to uh, your customers, right? Yes. When you click a button. So yeah, um, I'd recommend looking into Calendly and Time Trade and, and probably several others and figure out which one works best for your team, depending on how many people you have to coordinate with and all those other options, right? Yes. Okay, cool. And that's... That's it? That's it so far. Okay, cool. All right, so phase two, um, you know, once you've gotten their attention one time, you've gotten them to your website one time, you've gotten them to your Facebook page one time, um, phase two is really about building credibility and closing. And this is where aviation becomes different from every other type of marketing that we've ever done. Very few people are going to make a sale on a first contact. So phase two is usually pretty long in the aviation industry, um, which is why we have to have a lot of interaction. Um, social media is a really great way to keep people involved because once you have, once they have liked your page on social media, then they get informed or they get notified, especially when you do a live video or when you do anything else that might be of interest to them. So in this case, we're answering a question and this question was actually sent to us by email, but it may have come in Sometimes they come in through social media and we answered this question and we just got on a video and we talked about it. And uh, this particular post got quite a bit of attention. Um, they always do. These are some of our best performing posts when we just go on and answer a, a, a prospect's question. Um, that helps you know, kind of build the relationship. Uh, it doesn't cost them anything. It doesn't cost us anything. Other people see it. You know, it's a great way to to advertise, right, mm -hmm. and build credibility. Testimonials. Um, as soon as somebody has expressed an interest in one of our products or services, we try to send them testimonials that are relevant to them. So, you know, if this was a training outfit of any kind, um, we would send them testimonials from relevant people, uh, people who are involved with uh, um, that particular type of business, and you know, also who may have a a similar situation to the person that you're talking to so that it's relevant to them. But this is another one of those tribal things, right? In aviation, everybody wants to know who else has used your service and what 
kind of uh, results are they getting? So, you know, we believe things that our tribe tells us. We don't believe things that, that some marketing weirdo tells us, you know, that we've never, <laughs> uh, we have no connection with. So it's all about, all about connections, really, right? Good. Okay. Um, why would they come back to your site more than once? You know, how can you rack up those points of the number of brand interactions that they have? I'm sure you're going to tell us. <laughs> well, you have to have some reason for them to come back. So some new content or some something new that's an update or, um, you know, new information or, or something entertaining or something useful to them. Um, so, you know, articles, having a blog where you publish regularly on a schedule so they can expect the next one to come out on a, at a particular time and they look forward to it. Um, you know, that's a great way to build credibility and, and the rack up those positive brand interactions. Podcasts or videos are even better than that because they are multimedia. Um, we've had people tell us, you know, when I call them out of the blue, or I think it's out of the blue, that they recognize my voice because they listen to our podcast. <laughs> so they hear me every week and they feel like they know me and they, you know, have built up a certain level of trust because they kind of have an idea of the kinds of things we talk about, right? Um, tip sheets and checklists, you know, things that are helpful for them, uh, you know, to solve the problems that they have and other kinds of things. Um, we call those lead magnets, especially if they require um, a email or something like that so that we have a, a positive interaction. They have to do something in order to download that tip sheet or checklist. So it's one thing to just have it on your website, but you're going to want to have some special things that they have to actually actively <laughs> do something to get because they'll value it more. Um, they're more likely to pay attention to it and to actually read it if they had to do something to get it, right? Yes. Okay. Also, you get their contact information, which is even better. Mm -hmm. okay. And you can mark it too. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So why do recurrent content? Um, and the reason is because, you know, people hear from you once, but then that audience will build over time. And this is from our um, Libsyn account. That's our audio hosting account for our podcast. And you can see that over time, they put a trend line in there for us. Um, you know, people will listen um, more or less on any given day, but the overall trend is up. So if people have listened to one of our podcasts or read one of our blogs or watched one of our videos, they're a whole lot more likely to watch a second one than it is to get people out of the wild. You know, see what I'm saying? Yes. Okay, and you're the spreadsheet guy, so. Ha. Huh. Yeah, well, you got to have data to have numbers, and once you have numbers, they can be analyzed. Right. And the really cool thing about this also is we can see which episodes got the most traffic, and then we know which topics uh, people are the most interested in. And so we've actually shifted our business a little bit. Um, you know, as we've learned, people are not that interested in aviation copywriting, as an example, but they are very interested in video. Um, you know, so those are things that we've learned over time by watching the watching the data. Those interactions are good for us and good for them, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Um, online events like this webinar. Um, a lot of people who um, are considering becoming clients of ours uh, join us for one or two webinars and one or two podcasts, one or two articles, um, you know, any number of different things. But, uh, you know, webinars like this one are a, um, a good way to, to establish a, a positive brand interaction, hopefully. <laughs> when I remember to turn my microphone on, it's positive. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, chats are another good one. Um, a lot of people will do an open chat or something like that at, from a certain time to a certain time. Or um, on Twitter, you can do this. You can say, I'll uh, be live tweeting from this time to this time. So you can tweet me questions and I will answer them live and interactive. Um, go to meeting and Skype, uh, especially if you're international. Skype is a great one. So is Twitter uh, for this because it doesn't require a fabulous internet connection to make it work. Yep. Cool. All right. So online events are another way to establish these uh, positive brand interactions without spending a lot of money. In-person events cost a lot of money, <laughs> especially if you have to travel to get there. But, you know, that's what aviation is all about, right? Mm -hmm. is getting there and being there. And there really is no substitute to being in the same room with people and talking with them 
interactively and seeing their expressions and, um, you know, interacting with them personally. So, you know, the more you can do that, the better. <clears throat> and whether you do that at trade shows or, you know, with one-off sales visits or, you know, whatever it is that you do, those are great. <clears throat> so questions about phase two. Yeah, it looks like you got a one still writing. Mm, okay. We'll take the first one that was in there. Uh, we have a lot of people disappear, really, disapparate. <laughs> disappear. During the sales process. <clears throat> they just stop taking our calls. <clears throat> and uh, how can we prevent this? Okay. The disappearing prospect. Mm -hmm. We need a Sherlock Holmes situation here. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. <clears throat> Okay, so if you have a, the case of the disappearing prospect, <laughs> um, the more you know about that person, the better. So, you know, if you're doing lead tracking from your website, um, you know, if they have requested information from you, um, if they are attending your uh, webinars and things, if they're opening your emails, the more of that interaction you have, the more detailed information you have about when they dropped off. So, you know, maybe it was something you said. Maybe you left your microphone off during a webinar, <laughs> you know, whatever it is that you did. Um, and a lot of times it's not anything that you did. It's something that happens in their life that has nothing to do with you. Um, but the more you know about why they dropped off, the better decision you can make. Um, so often when you have that recurring content, it gives you the opportunity to get back in touch with them without it being a sales call. So you can call them and say, we just produced an article on something that we had talked about. You remember when we were talking about this problem that you had, um, you know, well, we just wrote an article and we've got some charts and graphs and things, and I thought you might be interested to see it. Um, so I'm going to send that to you and, you know, just wanted to check in with you and see how things are going. Um, that makes it a less salesy kind of a call. Um, and they're a lot more likely to return that call, even if you had to leave it as a voicemail, um, you know, because you're just being, helpful and polite and you're not being a pushy salesperson well and you should uh, make sure and take full use of your CRM exactly and you also want to let people know it is perfectly fine for them to decide that they are not a good customer for you and to tell you you know you know what I'm not interested in your your service um, you know I'm gonna stay around stick around in your Facebook feed or you know I do want to keep getting your newsletters because things might change but for right now, um, we've decided to go with a competitor. Uh, you know, let them know that it's okay for them to tell you that. Um, because you want them to keep talking with you, especially if they go with a competitor and, and let you know, you know, so how are things going? You know, are you having any problems? <laughs> you can get some really great information um, about how things are going and what their issues are, um, you know, what may be more attractive about a competitor's offer than yours. Uh, but you'd never know that if they stopped talking to you. Right? Yep. Okay. We have another question here. <laughs> We're a, quote, boring business to business company. What can we write about or speak about in a podcast that would be interesting? Okay. Um, good question. And, you know, not everybody is going to be interested in aviation insurance. Um, and you don't want everybody to be interested in aviation insurance. Well, only... we don't know if they're in insurance. Okay, well, um, a boring product, I guess I made an assumption. Hey, there you okay. go. Exactly. So let's let's say you have a boring product, such as insurance. Um, not everybody's going to be interested in that, and you don't necessarily want an audience of thousands. You know, having an audience of 10 is great if it's the right 10 people. Um, so, you know, there is nothing wrong with having a very small audience, and there are things that are absolutely fascinating to those people. And those things might be saving money or preventing problems or reducing risk or uh, saving their bosses behind uh, from a bad situation. Uh, you know, there's lots of things that are really, really interesting to a very small number of people. And, um, you know, being in, in the business that you are, you probably know what those things are. So I just brainstorm maybe a list of questions that customers ask you, a list of problems that people tend to have. Um, you know, what are the things that can go wrong in your business and how do you prevent them? Uh, you can always find like a news item. Let's say you do sell insurance and, 
you know, something happens in the news like this uh, United uh, situation with the passenger that was uh, hauled off the plane. Um, you know, how does that affect anybody's insurance? You know, the traveler, the carrier, the the law enforcement people, the airport. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things to talk about with just about any news story that uh, is interesting to people, right? True. Okay. Anything else? Uh, not yet. Okay, cool. All right. So new customers. Um, when a customer first signs a, a, a contract with you or, you know, creates his first transaction with you, this is the golden moment, right? This is when you get to really impress them. Um, they are going to be happier with you in that five minutes than they ever will be in the history of the world, even if you deliver everything perfectly, right? <laughs> just like the power company. <laughs> but they've just made a decision, and you want to reward that decision. And these are some of the um, new customer packages that we've gotten from, from aviation-related companies. The first one is from um, Garmin. Uh, you can see they gave us a, a nice little bag and a shirt with a Garmin logo and um, a nice box with the um, updated data and everything else. I think this is a box of discs. Is that right? No, well, or CDs. It's kind of old, but I don't remember what's it. It's it's a yeah, it's a small device. You plug in your computer, so you update the uh, the discs. Ah, right. Um, so all of these things, you know. No matter what you um, sell, you want to make sure that your customer feels like they just spent their money on something and they're getting something tangible in return, even if the product itself is not tangible. So you can give them things that are related to it, um, accessories, shirts, logo items, you know, other kinds of things to, um, you know, just make them feel really comfortable, you know, that they've just made a good investment. Um, Cessna does a really cool thing, um, and that is take baby pictures of your airplane as it's going through the factory. Um, so, you know, and as it's rolling off the line, this is our airplane. And, you know, this is uh, the sales guy handing John the keys uh -huh. uh, to the airplane. And, you know, in this perfectly spotless hangar, it also has some, you know, so this is about the customer. This other side over here is about the company. So they have, you know, the history of, of Cessna and historical things and, and other things like that. So. Um, I think this photo diorama is just so cool. I mean, it's a fantastic marketing piece. They also gave us, um, you know, a nice little card that has our customer service numbers and things, um, a key fob with the airplane's keys, a um, couple of little flashlights and things, um, a cleaning kit, you know, stuff like that. So all that stuff is really neat. Um, let me get rid of some of my writing and get the next picture up. Um, Next picture is, whoops, okay. This one was from the flight school uh, that I participated in and they um, provided a nice flight bag and kneeboard and E6B and uh, you know some other cool things. Um, the operating manual for the aircraft, um, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, paper charts, other kinds of things. So just neat stuff that makes you feel, wow, you know, I've just made a really good investment. I feel really good about this and I'm going to tell all of my friends and I'm going to show them my cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all kids, you know, when it comes down to it, aren't we? Um, we all enjoy Christmas morning. We all enjoy opening boxes. We all, you know, geek out over cool toys. So, you know, this is your opportunity to be the provider of cool toys, right? True. Okay. Um, Another thing you can do is product training. And these things are kind of in order of how valuable they are. Number one, on-site training. If you're selling a really expensive product or service and you can get people to come into the Cessna um, training facility and spend, how long did you spend there? Three days. Three days. Actually, three days plus an acceptance flight. Right. Um, that is the very best product training because then you're actually sitting with your customer and learning from him as he's learning from you um, about the product or service and, and making sure that he's happy and making sure that everything goes correctly. And they have a good first experience. Um, next best is go to meeting or Skype uh, in, you know, a personalized training where you're walking them through whatever it is. And this is great for software and other kinds of things. If you can offer a free training 
where you can kind of hold their hand the first time they try to do something. Um, so that's the next best. Next best after that is webinars that are not personalized. Um, so, you know, if it's not, if you're offering something for free or if you are, um, have a large group of people, uh, you know, webinars are, are a good way of doing that. Next best is, you know, a tip of the week via email. And you don't have to do just one. You can do the on-site training and then also do the tip of the week because they're not going to remember everything. And they're not going to remember everything in the first, they're not going to learn everything in the first sitting. And uh, last is information snacks. You know, the did you know that your product can also do this? Or did you know that you really should clean your fuel, fuel filter every three months? <laughs> and other kinds of things that will prevent problems, you know, and make them happier with the, the product or service over time, right? True. Okay. All right. Um, customer appreciation events. Uh, I think Saturn was really famous for making this um, this a thing uh, in the 80s or 90s, or whenever they started selling Saturn cars and they would have everybody come to the Saturn factory and they would do, uh, you know, product announcements and training and other kinds of things. I'm not going to read all of these, but um, whether you have four customers or hundreds or thousands of customers, you can do one or more of these activities once a year or once a quarter or, you know, however often uh, is appropriate, uh, depending on the price of your product and uh, the other kinds of things. So there's lots of things you can do. There's a whole article uh, on our blog about customer appreciation events and how to plan them and who to invite and how to uh, to make that work and how to uh, make it a, a marketing opportunity for testimonials and referrals and new customers uh, to interact with your old customers, sorry, experienced customers <laughs> and so on, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So yeah, we really, think customer appreciation events are, are a very good use of, of time and money. Private social media groups. Now, these are really cool. Um, and the reason for this is because your customers get to associate with each other. Uh, and it does not cost you anything to set this up, except time, you know, to kind of moderate it and make sure you're answering questions and so on. So, for example, this one, this group um, is of our Insider Circle, there are 28 members right now. Um, so only those 28 people get to see what's in this group and uh, comment on things and help each other out. And it is such a warm and enthusiastic and helpful group of people that it's really amazing what people will do for each other uh, in this business, you know, when they see opportunities to help or I've run into this problem before, try this instead of that, or um, you know, do you like this ad versus that ad, you know, which is, is more likely to resonate with this audience and um, other kinds of things. Or I'm going to be at this show. Who else is going to be there? Uh, let's have coffee, you know, those kinds of things. So you can do private social media groups in Facebook, I think, is probably the best one right now for that. Um, that has the, the privacy setting so that you can do that. Um, there's other groups that you can set up in LinkedIn and other things that kind of do this, but I'm not sure that they have as many options for setting this up and, and making it interactive and you can't share files and other things in LinkedIn. So um, that is an excellent option for, for helping your customers interact with each other and be happier. Uh, satisfaction survey. Um, better yet, call them and do an in-person checkup after you know they've had your product for the first week or the first month or the first 90 days or whatever you think is appropriate and say, how are things going? Have you run into any problems? And, uh, you know, you can do that survey over the phone uh, so that they feel a little bit more more cared for and uh, and you get better information. True. Yeah. Uh, birthday and holiday cards. We love doing these. We get birthday cards from our doctor, our lawyer, you know, some other folks. <laughs> Hertz rental car. <laughs> Hertz rental car. Um, so we know we're really special to Hertz rent a car. Um, you know, I mean, they're they're kind of goofy, but, you know, it certainly does rack up those positive brand interaction points. Um, you know, it is a, a way of of making sure that the only time that they hear from you is not when the bill is due. So, you know, every interaction you can have is is good. Referral gifts. Sure. This is my favorite. We have a company in Salt Lake that does 
fantastic chocolates at uh, the Cummings Chocolate Store on 7th East, and they do really amazing stuff. So in winter, when we get a referral, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we send chocolates. In summer, when we get a referral, it will be something else because uh, um, it's hard to send chocolates in, in the summer, uh, depending on where they're going and how that works. So, um, But yeah, it definitely is something special that we want to recognize, you know, when people go out of their way to refer someone to us, uh, you know, you really want to make sure that you reward that uh, behavior. And whether you have a formal or informal uh, referral program, you really should have one that you follow. So questions about phase three. Uh, I'm listening. Ah, I turned on Siri accidentally. I'll turn it off. <laughs> I'm trying. Okay. Yeah, but there's a couple of questions. Good. So how do you find the money to do all this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Excellent. Sorry. Um, I... Okay, let me figure out how to do this. Actually, what I'm going to do is just do this. So, um, question. okay, how do you find the money to do all this stuff? I totally agree that it's impossible to... Uh, you know, you can't conjure money out of out of nowhere. You have to be able to afford to send chocolates. You have to be able to afford to do a customer appreciation event. Um, most marketing companies will recommend that you spend 90% of your marketing money on phase one. And by phase one, we mean advertising, um, you know, your website, search engine optimization, you know, all of the things that you do to have a first interaction with people. Um, those are companies that don't understand aviation uh, and don't understand that the money in aviation is made in phase three with repeat business and referrals and uh, testimonials and, and other kinds of things. Um, that's really what brings in the money. In fact, we've had clients tell us that all of their customers or 80% of their customers can be traced back to one person who has a very large social network or who is very inter, inter influential in a, in a circle of people uh, who has referred all of their business to them. Uh, and then those people have referred business and everything else, but you know, they can trace all of that business back to one person. So they got the thing started. Exactly. So, you know, phase three is really where the money needs to go. And so, you know, we really recommend that you spend no more than 50% of your advertising or you know your marketing budget on phase one, and you spend at least 50% between phase two and phase three. And one of the most important things uh, is to make sure that you're doing those customer appreciation events and those uh, new customer packages and you know those other things. So if you have to divert money from advertising to do a good phase three, absolutely do it. So how do you keep track of people so you can make this stuff happen? <laughs> Good question. Yeah, if you don't have people's birthdays and you don't have, um, you know, a list of your old customers, which is, I think, just tragic. You know, there's um, we talked with someone not too long ago who had been in business for, you know, 15 or 20 years and did not have a list of the customers that they had been doing business with. You know, they could remember a few because, you know, that was all in their head, but they didn't have contact information and they didn't have that 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 stuff. Um, it's really, really important to have a good CRM um, as a customer relationship management system of some kind, you know, and whether that is one of the free ones, you know, you could use um, uh, there, you know, you could use MailChimp, you know, to start with or constant contact or something like that and at least have names, addresses, phone numbers, and other kinds of things. They have a, a very rudimentary CRM built in. Um, we use Infusionsoft, which actually allows us to also set up some multi-part email campaigns and do some other cool stuff, um, and also have set up the forms on our website and things like that so that they go directly into the CRM. Um, it will send us reminders when it's somebody's birthday, you know, do those kinds of things that, uh, that really help us keep track of people and, and make that work. So there's software that will help you uh, make that happen. You need to document every time you talk to a customer what you talked about too. Exactly, so that uh, everybody in your <clears> office <throat> sounds really smart. 
That's, Other questions? That's it. That's it? Okay, cool. All right. So um, in the last 10 minutes, if you are one of our, our clients, um, you already know about this. If you are not one of our clients, um, I do want to let you know about a special offer that we have. Um, this is not for everyone. Uh, if you are not in sales and marketing, sales and or marketing, either one of or both. Um, if you are not in the aviation industry, and if you are not short on time, I think all of us are, <laughs> then uh, this is not for you. Um, we like people who have enough experience to know what they don't know. Um, you know, people who are fresh out of college and know everything. <laughs> um, you know, there's not a whole lot that we can do for you if your cup is al already full, as they say, right? Uh -huh. um, we also like people who are open to sharing with other members as a panelist in a session or a networker or a referrer of business when it makes sense. Um, those are the kinds of people that this offer is going to be really, really helpful for. Um, so if this sounds like you, um, please do stay on the line and let's uh, let's talk about this. Okay, so um, once again, you sell something, you're in the aviation industry, and you understand that marketing is not magic, right? True. Okay. No matter what the guy with the cat's doing. <laughs> exactly. So there is no easy button, and there is nothing magic about this. It's all, uh, it unfortunately, work but there are ways to make it smarter and make it easier. So we built the insider circle uh, for a lot of really good reasons. Um, among them, you know, success is about what you know and about who you know, uh, especially in the aviation industry. As we talked about, it is very tribal. Uh, people want to know who else you're doing business with. They want to know, um, you know, who recommends your product. Uh, you know, we're after all of that and knowing the right people can really be helpful. You want to save time and money and your reputation by bouncing things off of a group instead of bouncing them off your customers, right? True. <laughs> Absolutely true. Yeah. And you want to focus on what's relevant uh, and, you know, not be reinventing hot water and spinning your wheels doing something that maybe somebody else has already figured out. Um, and you also want to learn one thing at a time. We spend one month um, working on a topic and we have a specific goal for that month. And so by the end of the year, we'll have 12 specific goals uh, accomplished, you know, which really makes uh, things much more easy to manage uh, throughout the year uh, with all your other priorities and everything else. So one of the most valuable things about the Insider Circle is what we call office hours. Um, we had someone call us the other day and say, you know, how do I just get a couple of hours of your guys' time? Um, I'm willing to pay for that. And I... Um, understand that it's valuable and I really want to just buy some some consulting time. Um, the most cost effective way to do that is our insider circle. We set it up so that we get one office hour a month that you can use for anything you like. Um, so any project that you're working on, whether it's a business plan or a sales process that doesn't seem to be working or maybe a, um, a marketing campaign that flopped or, um, you know, a question about how to, to set something up, whatever it is that you need, we spend that hour on that. And, uh, you know, that really makes it very custom to that person. And uh, we do whatever we can to help them in that hour. And you can always buy more hours, but um, one hour is usually enough to, to keep people on track and, and get a lot done. We have a project software area, you know, where we actually keep recordings of your office hours, um, all of the documents and other things. So you're not searching through your email um, or keeping track of the to do's. So, you know, last month you said you were going to do this, that and the other thing. And then we help hold you accountable for that with a, a nice little checklist to make sure that that happens. And we become your accountability buddy, like your personal trainer, right? Make sure you show up at the gym. <laughs> okay. Um, destinations. Now, this is where we offer some done-for-you services. So if you want us to set up your website or you want us to uh, do some search engine optimization or build a press release for you or any of those things, um, it's kind of like getting in the back seat of an airplane, having somebody else drive for a little while. Um, we'll do the work for you and uh, um, make that happen less expensively than we do for the world at large, when people are, are insiders, we know more about their business, so it becomes easier for us to do those kinds of projects, and they get priority. Um, our book club, as we talked about, this month we're reading Seth Godin's Tribes, 
And some of the stuff in that book is very, very relevant to aviation. And some of the stuff in that book is total crap um, <laughs> <laughs> from an aviation perspective because it's written for uh, kind of a more retail, um, inexpensive product kind of a, a perspective, right? Uh -huh. So, you know, it helps to have a group of people go through it and say, you know, this worked for me. I would not try that on a bet because it's not going to work in this, uh, this audience. And having some experienced people uh, go over those ideas and have an opportunity to, to talk to each other really helps. Um, we have our briefing room, which is where we keep all of our uh, recordings and webinars and everything else. So if you want to know how to set up a customer appreciation event, that uh, webinar is in the briefing room. So, you know, if you need that three months from now, you'll be able to, to find that and get all the information and, and go from there. We do have some live events like our Sundance uh, Storytelling Summit. Um, and this is going to be in Sundance, Utah, which is the spiritual home of the Sundance Film Festival. And uh, we may or may not run into Robert Redford. I kind of hope we do. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's a great place to learn how to make uh, ourselves more influential as storytellers and other kinds of things and to uh, get some experience telling stories. We're also going to be recording those so that you'll go home with a CD or, well, with a recording, digital of, of some kind, of your uh, origin story, a two-minute story of your product or service that you can use in your marketing. So that's a, a live event that we're going to be having with our, our group. So it's risk-free. We have a 30-day money-back guarantee uh, and no long-term contract. So, you know, if you get in, uh, you look around, you meet the other folks, you start reading the materials, you decide it's not for you, uh, you lose nothing. You just let us know uh, within 30 days, we'll send your money back and uh, life goes on, right? Yep, absolutely. Okay. So um, we have, uh, you know, some of the folks in that group really, really like it. And, uh, you know, they say very nice things about it. Uh, Jean Clo, Great Circle Aircraft, said the marketing masterclass is worth every penny. Um, that was before we renamed it to the Insider Circle, but that's what he said, so we'll use what he said. <laughs> okay, you also get $347 in free advertising every month uh, in the Insider Circle, and the way that breaks down is you get um, listings in our directory, uh, which we charge $20 a month for. You get to list your events, uh, at least one a month. If, if you uh, want more than that, you can let us know and we'll work something out. Those are $30 a piece is what we charge for those in, in the real world. Um, you get to advertise on our podcast um, by coming on uh, our uh, book group and, you know, talking about the book of the month. And then we also let you do a, um, a pitch for your product or service at the end of that podcast after people have had a chance to to listen to your your thoughts and philosophies and, and other kinds of things and get to know you better. Um, and those are worth at least $40 uh, or $400, excuse me, a piece because uh, podcast advertising is really pretty expensive. It's about $40 per thousand. And uh, so we figured out the cost of that. Okay, so we do have a bonus that is going on through Saturday, this Saturday, April 15th. Um, so, if you join us, um, you may have gotten a postcard in the mail uh, that looks like this. We've actually sent three postcards in that um, in that uh, campaign. But uh, whether or not you got the postcard, you are welcome to do this. And you can choose your bonus. You can get either search engine optimization, um, and that's an evaluation and coaching uh, on what's going right, wrong, and indifferent with the search engine optimization of your website, how you can get more traffic. Uh, for the right keywords, uh, or you can do a sales process evaluation and coaching, uh, and that's a $279 value. So you can pick one or the other uh, if you join us before April 15th, and it's a really good deal even without those bonuses, but um, if you want the bonuses, you do, do need to sign up this week, right? Absolutely. Okay, so um, we'll stay on the line and answer questions for as long as you guys want to talk about questions. So, okay, I don't think, yep. Okay, what's included in a sales process evaluation? Uh, sales process evaluation is basically where we walk through your sales process as if John and I were customers. 
Um, so, you know, we will um, go on your website. We're going to look at that <clears throat> and, you know, pretend that we are a customer for your particular product or service and look at it from a customer's perspective. <clears throat> and we're going to ask for a um, sales presentation from you um, that you can deliver to us. And then we're going to um, play the role of the customer. We're going to ask you tough questions. Uh, we're going to take a lot of notes. We're going to record the whole thing. And then we're going to provide that recording and our notes uh, with a summary and recommendations back to you and say, here's what you could have done that would have been more persuasive uh, in that sales process that would have uh, been more likely to close the sale. So what's the monthly cost? The monthly cost for the Insider Circle is $279, $279 a month. Excuse me. <laughs> And how long is the commitment? There is no commitment. So you spend $279 um, in April and uh, you decide that it is not for you. So before May 15th, uh, you decide to cancel. We send your money back. So, you know, we don't want anybody in the program that is not a good fit. And, you know, like I said, we were very selective about those members because they are very warm and responsive and helpful to each other. And, uh, you know, we don't want any anybody who's not a good fit or who isn't feeling it <laughs> in the group, right? Yep. Okay. So we might decide that, that, that it's not a good fit or you might decide that it's not a good fit. Either way, you get your money back and there's no, um, no skin off anybody's nose, right? True. Well, it doesn't look like, okay, wait a minute. So how much time does it take to participate? Uh, okay. Um, some of our members are involved in sales or marketing full time. That is their full time job. And they just use the insider circle as part of their process. So, you know, they run things by the group before they publish them. Uh, you know, they uh, ask us, you know, questions in our office hours and other kinds of things. So I would say a minimum of an hour a week to really make it worth it. Um, you know, to participate and be um, reading the books and doing other things. It really depends on um, your job and how you integrate this into your job. And usually our first office hours section is, is talking about what are your objectives and how can we help you meet your objectives. So it's not really time spent on the program. It's time spent on your objectives using the program as a tool, right? True. So I'm going to combine this and try to make one thing out of it. So okay, is yeah. this, who is this for? Is this for CEOs or founders of companies or admins or marketing coordinators or? Okay, right. We do have people in the group who are salespeople. We have people in the group who are marketing coordinators or admins. Um, we have people in the group who are um, CEOs and founders uh, of companies. So I think it's a flexible enough program that uh, people do a pretty good job, no matter who they are, of uh, finding ways to participate that, that makes sense to them. And of course, you know, your office hours are gonna be custom and, and everything else. So I think it's, as long as you're in aviation, you are in either sales or marketing, um, either as a, a CEO, a, a salesperson, a sales manager, a, um, an admin, you know, any any role in, in the sales or marketing arena, I think you will benefit a lot from this program. If you're not in sales or marketing or if you're not in aviation, those would be the two reasons not to, to join. Well, I think that's all so far. That's it for the questions? Uh -huh. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us. We're really happy that you were here and uh, I hope that you took notes on the worksheet as you were going through and uh, had a great, uh, great time and we'll have lots of plans for how to increase the number of interactions that people have with your brand, making them more positive and uh, also making them uh, more frequent. So have a great afternoon and we'll see you next month. Yes, have a good one. You're cool.